Welcome to Downtown Disney. Let's eat some vegan food. These are all of the options to the best of my knowledge as of June 2019. Please be aware that although I try to update as thoroughly as I can, the food options at the Disneyland Resort do change regularly, so the information becomes out of date at some point. Please check the main page of this channel if you are watching this more than a couple of months in the future and use the most current version of the guide so that you have the most accurate info when you visit the park. Also check out my blog and my Instagram which are linked in the description below and they will give you the most up-to-date information. So let's go ahead and start at the newest restaurant in downtown Disney which is Black Top Craft Burgers and Shakes. They have a couple of entrees here that are actually vegan with no modifications. We have the vegan burger and quinoa bowl and that's a bowl of kale and quinoa and pickled onions and avocado and then on top you have the house-made black bean vegan burger and the salsa verde on top as well. And of course they have their vegan burger in regular burger format as well and that's the black bean burger and the avocado and the salsa verde. The french fries, sweet potato fries, chips, and brussels sprouts are all fried in a shared fryer so you can ask for a substitute side if you're not comfortable with shared fryers. The sesame tahini sauce which comes with the brussels sprouts appetizer and the salsa verde and the texas barbecue sauce are all vegan and you can read more about the ingredients of all of those on my blog. And they can also make you a vegan version of their classic shakes. You can order a shake from inside the restaurant as usual or you can go up to their walk-up shake window outside the restaurant for a quick shake to take with you. The vegan version of the shake is with a soy milk based vegan ice cream. So to order a vegan shake, ask for the vegan ice cream base on the classic shake and then choose any flavor except for Nutella which has dairy. So the vegan flavors are coffee, vanilla, chocolate, black cherry, strawberry, caramel, peanut butter, and Oreo cookies and cream. They currently have a quote unquote non-dairy whipped cream but it's actually just a lactose free whipped cream that still has milk in it. So the chef told me that they are working on getting an actual vegan whipped cream in stock as soon as possible. What you see here is the black cherry shake which I thought was super delicious. Now let's head over to Ballast Point Brewery which is next door and it's also relatively new. According to a vegan server all of their beers are vegan except for the Victory at Sea which contains lactose but there shouldn't be any ice and glass involved or gelatin in any of these beers. The soy riso and cauliflower tacos are marked vegan on the menu so those are 100% vegan, no modifications needed there. And then the Cali steak burrito can be modified to be vegan. So what you can do is substitute impossible meat for the steak and omit the cheese. The fries inside the burrito and the chips served on the side are prepared in a shared fryer, so if you prefer you can omit the fries and get a salad instead of chips. There is some controversy around Impossible Foods, so if you have not already, please research it and decide whether it's something you're comfortable with. I recommend the article that I've linked in the description below. There is actually a bit of a shortage going on with Impossible Foods right now. The company is having a hard time keeping up with demand, so you may be actually substituting Beyond Meat instead of Impossible Meat in this burrito, but it would be delicious either way. And they do have the Impossible Burger on the menu as a regular burger. Omit the cheese and ask for a lettuce wrap because they currently don't have a vegan bun option. But um, since there's a shortage right now, you may be actually getting the Beyond Burger instead of the Impossible Burger. The Impossible Lettuce Cups are vegan with no modifications. And this is actually made with the big blocks of Impossible Meat, which is a different product from the Impossible Burger. So there isn't a shortage of that at the moment, it appears. And so you should be able to still find these as they appear on the menu. They also have a Bavarian pretzel on the menu and the pretzel itself is vegan so you can order it without the cheese dip and then the mustard that it comes with is vegan and you can substitute the chipotle tofu aioli which normally comes on the soy tacos instead of the cheese. Continuing along we have Wetzel's pretzels. The original pretzels are vegan as far as the dough goes but they typically brush them with butter when they come out of the oven. So what you can do is ask for one without butter and they typically make new batches relatively frequently. So they give you one for the next batch if you can wait for a minute or two. The pretzel bits without the butter are also vegan and they currently have a drink on the summer menu that they're promoting, a cherry boba frozen lemonade. And I asked about the boba balls, it turns out they are the same popping pearls that you can find at many locations throughout Disneyland and California Adventure as well. And you can look on my blog for an ingredients list on those. So it checks out to be vegan. Now let's head over to Salt and Straw which is a Portland based ice cream company with lots of vegan flavors. They are all marked clearly on the menu with a V. So we have the roasted strawberry coconut, dandelion chocolate hazelnut cookies and cream, and the freckled mint chocolate chip. And those are all in the permanent menu. Those are regular flavors. And then they have seasonal flavors that changes once a month. There aren't any limited edition vegan flavors at the moment for June 2019, but hopefully at the beginning of July we will get a new flavor. The sugar cones, which are the smaller ones pictured here, are vegan, but the waffle cones, the larger ones, contain egg. And then you can also get scoops in a cup. 
The sprinkles and the chocolate sauce are vegan and you can go on my blog to see ingredients lists for those. And they also have several types of vegan chocolate bars here. So the Portland Woodblock Madagascar has only two ingredients, cacao and sugar, and then the salt flavor is just cacao, sugar, and salt. Also in the fridge over here on the right, you can buy entire pints of their ice cream. So all of the vegan flavors are there. You can just look at the bottom row for those. And I do this quite often on my way home from the park. Also over here we have Sanuk, which is a sandal and flip-flop store. And they have flip-flops that are actually made out of yoga mat material. So these are mostly all vegan. They do say on the website that some of them have wool, like some of the different sandals have wool. So just watch out for those. But basically these are vegan sandals. And I have a pair that I've been wearing for a long time and they are super comfortable. Next to that we have Naples and Napolini. So Napolini is the quick service side of the restaurant and this is basically if you want to get a quick pizza. And so what they can do here is make you a pizza with no cheese and your choice of toppings. And then next door to that we have Naples which is the table service side of the restaurant so there's a lot more options here. You can veganize the pizza by asking for no cheese. I like to ask for extra sauce and then of course your toppings of choice. In the photo here you see a pizza with eggplant, artichokes, black olives, and arugula. The minestrone soup is vegan as is, and then they have the bruschetta. All you have to say on the bruschetta is omit the cheese. And then they have a salad called the della casa salad, and that's vegan as is. And then in this photo, I asked them to add some chickpeas to it. And then they also have the panini alla verdure, which is vegan as is. It always comes with no cheese. It's just a veggie panini. And then um, they have the spaghetti and marinara, and then you can ask for no meatballs to make that one vegan. And then they have several sides that are vegan as is, sautéed spinach, rosemary potatoes, and rapini, which is a type of broccoli. And then the chef showed us the ingredients on the ciabatta bread, and it is just flour, yeast, and salt, he said. And then they also have a pizza dough bread that they make fresh, and they brought us out some of that, so both those are vegan. And then if you ask about vegan desserts, they actually have some sorbets in the back that they keep sort of on the secret menu. So in this photo, you see a pistachio and lemon flavor sorbet, and they were both delicious. Over here at Sprinkles Cupcakes, they have one vegan flavor and it's called the Vegan Red Velvet. And you might not always see it in the display case, but they always have some in the back. So even if you don't see it, ask for one and they may have some in the back. The cake is very moist and the frosting is really amazing. I think it's a coconut milk based frosting, so it does have a bit of a coconut flavor to it and it is super tasty. And over here at Sephora, there are lots of options for vegan and cruelty free makeup. So if you ask the employee, they will actually show you a list they have of all the vegan brands and then some of the products within the brands that are vegan. So Cat Fundy and Milk are two companies that are all vegan, so you don't have to worry about which product is which. Those are all vegan and all cruelty free. And then Tarte is a brand that is all cruelty free with many vegan items. So you just look at the display case and it has a little green V next to all the vegan products. And then there is also Too Faced, which is cruelty-free and many of their products are vegan. And then Urban Decay is cruelty-free and many of their products are vegan as well. And their vegan products are labeled with a paw print symbol next to each product. Over here at Jumbo Juice, there are a ton of vegan options. So many of the smoothies are already vegan or can be made vegan. And so the all fruit smoothies are obviously vegan already. And then you can make little substitutions on the ones that aren't vegan. For example, you can sub soy or almond milk for any time that milk appears. So if you look in the blog post that corresponds to this guide, I have a link to a Veg News article and that goes over how to veganize all the smoothies here. And as you can see there, we have oatmeal with soy milk as well. I haven't tried that yet, but it is on my list. And then we have a few more vegan options just hanging around the store. For example, this little fruit cup. And then we have these little pop chips and they are actually labeled vegan clearly on the back there. And that is the sea salt flavor. And then we have also the barbecue flavor that is labeled clearly vegan on the back. So now let's head over to Catal Restaurant and Uva Bar and Cafe. These two restaurants are sort of connected in a way, but they have very different menus and they're quite different restaurants. So Catal Restaurant is the upstairs portion and it's a lot fancier than Uva. And the menu doesn't have anything that is remotely modifiable to be vegan, but they have a secret vegan menu item that they will tell you about if you ask about it. So it's called the Vegan Paella, and it was super tasty, and I would very much get it again. It's very filling and satisfying. This is actually quite common at fancy restaurants, is that you look at the menu and you think, oh, a vegan couldn't eat here. But if you ask about options, they do actually have a dish that they make regularly for vegans. This is advice for new vegans that it may look like you can't eat at a place, but if you ask, they often have something that they can make for you. So now let's head over to the Uva Bar and Cafe, which is the smaller and more casual part of these two restaurants. And this is the part that's in the center of the walkway here, this circular part. And so they have seating here outdoors, and then they also have some indoor seating on the side over underneath Catal. 
So let's go over the vegan options here. We have the guacamole on the appetizer menu and all you have to do is ask for no cheese because normally they sprinkle some cheese on top of there. Down here on the sides menu we have the sweet potato fries with ketchup and then the sea salt garlic fries. Those come with ranch but you can just do ketchup instead. They are made in a shared fryer. The best options in my opinion on this menu are the trio of Mediterranean dips and the watermelon salad and I got some footage of those last time I got them so we'll see what those look like. So this is the trio of Mediterranean dips which is hummus, baba ganoush, and muhammara and all of those dips are vegan. It normally comes with a pita bread and that pita bread does contain dairy so you can just ask for extra veggies to dip in it instead. Um, the candied walnuts do not have dairy or honey, I asked for those specifically, but the server said that they are made in-house and they are made in a shared fryer. So they are vegan. Um, just know the shared fryer. And then we have the watermelon salad over here and all you have to do on that is say omit the feta cheese and so it's actually a really good salad. It's a lot of arugula and then you've got sort of grapes and um, watermelon and red onions and lots of tasty stuff in there. So now let's head over to Tortilla Joe's and one thing I can definitely recommend here is the table side guacamole. So when you order that, a server comes to your table with a cart that's loaded up with all the different guacamole ingredients and then you can tell them what amounts you would like of each ingredient so you can really customize it to make it more and less spicy or more and less of your favorite ingredients. And then um, it ends up being a very large portion of guacamole, much larger than what you would usually get as a guacamole appetizer. As for the entrees, they have this veggie burrito and that's actually vegan with no modifications. So I double checked with the chef that the quinoa meatballs are vegan, they don't have any eggs or dairy. So the burrito has house-made quinoa meatballs, black beans, roasted tomatoes, poblano peppers, and red onion, and it's topped with salsa ranchera and served with cilantro rice. It doesn't come with cheese or sour cream, but it doesn't hurt to say no cheese or sour cream just in case, because I feel like at Mexican restaurants there are random sprinkles of cheese sometimes, even when it's not marked that way on the menu. The portobello mushroom fajitas are also vegan, and they're super delicious if you're a mushroom fan. They're not supposed to come with cheese or sour cream, but again, it doesn't hurt to say it just in case. They come with the tortillas, fajita veggies, mushrooms, tomatoes, with cilantro, guacamole, black beans, and cilantro rice. Just for reference, if you want to get any of the sides or modify any of the menu items, the server told me that the red rice is made in chicken stock and the refried beans do contain lard. So the vegan versions of those are the cilantro lime rice and the black beans. They also have a weekend brunch menu, which I haven't tried myself yet, but the server told me that the vegetarian breakfast burrito without the egg whites is actually vegan. Now let's head over to Earlive Sandwich. Two of their sandwiches are easy to veganize. One is the caprese, so all you have to do is omit the cheese and then add avocado if desired. I said avocado instead of cheese and they didn't charge me extra, so hopefully that works for you. And then they also have the veggie sandwich and on that you just have to omit the cheese and the dressing and then that becomes vegan. The white bread is the default bread and that one is vegan, but the wheat bread contains honey. Now we'll have a quick walk around inside the Earl of Sandwich to see what's vegan out here and we have the um, Miss Vicky's Sea Salt and Vinegar Chips very surprisingly have milk in them so watch out for those. Also the other flavors that they have here so the barbecue ones have milk in them and the jalapeno ones have milk in them. I find this of course all very unnecessary. What's the deal Vicky? You gotta get on the vegan train. But at least down here we got some hummus, celery, and carrots and that doesn't seem to have any funny business going on. Looks vegan to me. And of course there's fruit and there's usually some bananas at the register as well. So a brand new addition to Downtown Disney is this cart called LA Ice or Italian Ice. And I walked by it on the first day and they were super nice and helpful in answering all my questions about the ingredients. So what they have is fruit sorbets, mango, strawberry, pineapple, and raspberry. And then they have two flavors of cashew based vegan ice cream. So one's chocolate and the other is vanilla. So that means that all of their flavors are vegan. All of their cones are also vegan, so they showed me the ingredients list for the cones themselves. I checked for eggs, dairy, and honey, and also the sugar glaze that three of them are dipped into is also vegan, so I checked for eggs, dairy, honey, and also shellac and beeswax and confectioner's glaze and things like that. As far as the toppings, they are all vegan except for the M&Ms, obviously. So they showed me the ingredients list for the sprinkles, and they did check out as vegan, so no beeswax or confectioner's glaze or anything like that in the sprinkles. And then they also have Oreos, Fruity Pebbles, Chamoy, and Tahin mangoes and strawberries as toppings and I forgot to ask about the sauces which shows those are vegan but I will ask about those next time. So what we have here is the Snow Queen cone with vanilla cashew ice cream and rainbow sprinkles and it is just so pretty and it is just as delicious as it looks. Out of all the flavors I sampled I actually liked the chocolate the best but I ended up going for the vanilla because it matched the cone that I wanted better. So I had my vanilla cone and then I had a scoop of the chocolate in a cup after that. You can find this cart sort of near the middle of downtown Disney, between Ralph Brennan's Jazz Kitchen and the Lego Store. So now we're over here at Ralph Brennan's Jazz Kitchen, and this place is actually a lot more vegan friendly than it may seem. 
So the regular menu is very meat-based, but in the fine print at the bottom of the menu it says special dietary menu available upon request. So if you ask for this menu, you get one that says a vegan plate and a vegan pasta. So this is another example, just like the Catal restaurant where it seems like a vegan couldn't eat here, but if you just ask a couple of questions, you'll find that there is actually something for vegans to eat in every restaurant. So I have had both of these before, both the vegan plate and the vegan pasta. The vegan plate is basically a bunch of roasted veggies. So when I got it that day, it was asparagus, zucchini, potatoes, artichokes, bell peppers, onions, and broccolini. And I'm sure this could change according to the season. And then the vegan pasta for me was penne pasta, tomato basil sauce, zucchini, artichoke hearts, garlic, spinach, onions, bell pepper, etc. And they're both super tasty. Now let's head over to Splitsville, which is actually a bowling alley, but they have some great food as well. So they have several dishes with impossible meat. And again, there's some controversy around impossible foods. Check the link in the description if you want to learn more about that. And then here's a summary of what is vegan or able to be made vegan here. First we have the taco bowl, and you can request the impossible meat and omit the cheese and sour cream. And the shell is in a shared fryer. Also, you can just get a regular Impossible Burger, and all you have to do is say no cheese and no special sauce, and it's cool because on the menu it actually tells you how to order it vegan, very convenient. Also, you can get the spicy veggie bowl, and then you just choose tofu, and then make sure to switch the sauce for the vegan sauce because there is a kimchi sauce that has fish in it, so just switch it for the regular tataki sauce. And then on the poke bowl, all you have to do is choose the tofu and then omit the mayo. And then there's an edamame appetizer. You just switch out the sauce that contains dairy, and ask your server about sauce options on that. And then they also have a veggie sushi roll and that one is vegan with no modifications necessary. And then you can also modify the grilled avocado appetizer. Normally this comes with tuna and you can replace the tuna with either grilled veggies or tofu and then switch out the sauce. One of those sauces contains fish, the kimchi sauce. And then um, I made the spicy mayo and it comes with wonton chips that contain eggs. So that one's a few modifications, but it's quite good. And then they've got tons of cocktails on the menu, and most of those are vegan as well. Now let's head up here to La Brea Bakery, and similar to Tortilla Joe's, there's actually a sit-down side of the restaurant and then an express side of the restaurant with counter service. And the menus are really quite different depending on which side you go to. At the table service side of La Brea Bakery, they have an artisan veggie burger, which is a house-made vegan patty, bean and quinoa based, avocado, arugula, cilantro hummus, fried shallots, and heirloom tomatoes. Omit the basil aioli to make it vegan. The chef told us that the fried shallots, which come in packaging, they aren't prepared in the restaurant, have on the ingredients list only shallots and palm oil. I don't have them in this photo, so what you see pictured here is the burger with no aioli and no shallots. The chef told us that the wheat bun, the sourdough, and the French bread are all vegan. Make sure to double check when you order though, because they do sometimes change the bread. The hummus toast trio from the appetizer section of the menu is vegan with no modifications. It is roasted garlic, sun-dried tomato, and jalapeno cilantro hummuses served on a French baguette. And on the breakfast slash brunch menu, there is an oatmeal made with almond milk. At the express side of the library bakery, they make pizzas to order, so you could get a pizza with no cheese and any toppings you like. And they can also make you a veggie sandwich on sourdough or French bread. In the case over here, they've got some various juices and some fruit cups and some coconut water and then over on the left here we have some bread so they sell the whole loaf of the french bread the baguette and that one has the ingredients list on it and it's vegan and then they have a few more loaves out at the moment and those are the pecan raisin or pecan raisin depending on where you're from and that one checks out as vegan as well and then there is another one down here that's the sourdough loaf and sourdough loaf is a vegan's best friend because it's always vegan unless there's some funny business going on and then this gluten-free loaf up here is not vegan it has eggs in it as you might expect from a gluten-free loaf of bread they also keep some almond milk on hand here so if you want some coffee with almond milk you just ask for a coffee and a little bit of almond milk and then you can go fill it up over here Speaking of coffee, let's go over to the Starbucks. There are actually two Starbucks locations in downtown Disney, so we'll see what's vegan in here. Um, you probably know that Starbucks offers soy milk and almond milk and coconut milk, so almost any drink can be made vegan by choosing one of those milks. There's just a couple of syrups that have dairy in them. So since there are so many options, it's way too many to go over here, but if you just Google how to order vegan at Starbucks, you'll find some up-to-date lists. So we'll just go ahead and check out what's vegan in the refrigerated case over here. 
there's the avocado spread and you can actually put that on your bagel, the bagels, the plain bagels at Starbucks are vegan. And then we've got some hippies over here and hippies actually say vegan on the front of those, the white cheddar. And then these coconut clusters are actually really good and those are not certified vegan, but if you read the ingredients list, they are vegan. And then we have these simply salted potato chips, which are vegan as you would expect. And then we've got, uh, I assume this would have butter, but I just wanted to check anyway. You never know because the popcorn inside Disneyland is vegan, right? But that one isn't. And then the sweet potato chips, these ones are vegan. Just the sweet potatoes and the oil and salt. And then we got some regular salt and vinegar chips made by Starbucks. Those ones are vegan, doing a lot better than Miss Vicky's. And then we got the barbecue. And the barbecue is also vegan. And then we also have down here some granola bars. And a lot of these have honey. So you have to be careful about these quote-unquote healthy granola bars because a lot of times they have honey. But over here we have these little fruit bars that are called That's It, and the ingredients are just apples and blueberries. Well done, that's it. And over here we have the Justin's Dark Chocolate Peanut Butter Cups, which are vegan as well. Now we'll head over to Marceline's Confectionery, which is a candy shop, and there are quite a few vegan candies in packaging here, but none of the candies in the display case or the fresh desserts are vegan to my knowledge. They all have milk and or eggs in them, so we have to keep writing emails to Disneyland to change that, and there's a link in the description below for the Disneyland feedback form you can write an email saying, I would like some more vegan desserts, or whatever else it is that you would like. I would like some vegan churros, I would like some vegan corn dogs. We should write as many emails as we can. So let's check out the candy in here. We've got these lollipops that it's quite hard to read the ingredients list, but those are vegan. It's basically just the sugar and the colors, and then we can look at these other lollipops down here. Same deal. Some of these Goofy's packaged candies are vegan and others aren't. So we've got the licorice, for example, appears to just be the sugar and the dyes and things. Just note the palm oil in there, but otherwise it appears to be vegan. And then um, these gummies have gelatin mostly, as you would expect. And then we've got sour cherry balls. These ones have beeswax, I believe. Confectioner's glaze, yeah. Confectioner's glaze is um, usually made from beetles as well. And then I have some more gummies and you can see the gelatin in that one. And then we have some of these jellies and these ones are actually just pectin, I think. Yeah. So pectin has a similar effect as the gelatin, but it's actually made from fruit. So these jelly candies do not have gelatin. They have pectin and that makes them vegan. And then we got these mini unicorn pops and those appear to be vegan. And then we'll come over here to the taffy, and the taffy actually contains egg, and that is the same with all of the taffy around the Disneyland Resort. Unfortunately, the Bing Bong's taffy and all that, it all has egg in it. And then the cotton candy has the ingredients list right there, just the sugar and flavors and dyes. And then down here we have the rock candy, which appears to be vegan as well. Over here we have some box candy and anytime you see these Rice Krispie treats, they're all over the resort in various different types of packaging. So anytime you see these, these marshmallows will have gelatin in them and that one has milk as well. Um, but then we have Chip and Dale, our old friends. We can rely on them. We got some pretzels that are vegan and then we have some, these are not vegan. These have milk. It's very sad. Okay, now we have some nut mixes. And that's very appropriate for Chip and Dale. I think they would much more likely be eating nuts than they would little Cheez-Its. Now we've got Nature's Trail Mix. This one is vegan as well. And this one's the Crunchy Spicy Mix. And that one has a super long ingredients list because of all the spices, but it appears to be vegan. Now we've got this Fruit and Nut Mix. And so that's just nuts and dried fruits. And this one is vegan. And then we are checking this mountain mix. I believe this one has milk in it because of the M&Ms. So now we'll come over here to the popcorns. And so they do have a regular kettle corn and that one is vegan, but all of these different flavored ones have milk in them. So you'll want to look for the plain kettle corn and it has the ingredients list 
right there. They used to be a sriracha one, and that one was vegan as well. It was the only other one I ever found that didn't have milk in it, but I haven't seen that for a while. But maybe that'll show up again. So over here we have some bagged chocolates, and the ones in the blue package are the dark chocolate nonpareils, and these ones are vegan. And then the other ones we want to look for are the cocoa dusted dark chocolate almonds, and they're in the sort of teal package. And there's the ingredients list on those. And then all the other ones have milk in them. So just look for the blue and the teal. Over here we have some quote unquote snacks with character. And I think they're meant for people who have allergies, but you still gotta check that ingredients list because that cranberry mix has milk in it, I'm assuming from the chocolate. And then these are some gluten-free cookies, but um, they have egg in them. So it's kind of disappointing. And then those are the two different flavors there, but they both have egg. And then over here we have Goofy's Powdered Candy, which is just a bunch of different flavors of sugar with colors and dyes. And they actually do put the ingredients list down there. It's listed down here. So you can read the ingredients list and um, you can just put it into those little containers there if you want a sugar high. And like I said, nothing in that case over there is vegan, but we just gotta keep writing those emails and keep telling them at City Hall and Chamber of Commerce that we want more vegan desserts especially and more vegan things in general and then one day we will get something vegan in that case and over here in this little refrigerator or this little freezer we have a um, little strawberry fruit bar that's vegan and that's about it from our Celine's. They usually have a few of the same packaged foods here at the home store. This used to be like a Star Wars store but now it is a home store and often you will find the dark chocolates and sometimes the kettle corn in here. So let's just have a look. So under the register over here, I found my old friend, the dark chocolate non pareils, and I don't think I saw any of the cocoa dusted dark chocolate almonds that day, but these things change on the daily. Now let's check out Rinse Soap. So you may recognize Rinse from their carts at the previous food and wine festivals and at the festival holidays, but now they have a permanent location in downtown Disney. It is a bit hard to find. It's actually around the corner from Earl of Sandwich. So you'll need to exit downtown Disney as if you were going to the Disneyland Hotel and then turn left after security and then you'll see it around the corner on your left. Most of their products are vegan. So let's just take a quick walk around the store and see what's vegan here. So over here we have the body butters and they all have super nice scents. They're sort of thicker than a lotion, a little bit more like a hand cream, but you can use them over your entire body. And all of the scents are vegan. I'm currently working on a ginger and lemongrass one. It smells amazing. There is an almond and honey one you see on their left, but that one doesn't actually have honey. It just has essential oils that make it smell like honey. So that one is vegan as well. And rinse is actually super awesome because they label on every product, whether it's vegan friendly or not. So it makes it really easy to recognize. So over here we have these shower bombs and all of these are vegan and they're sort of like having a bath bomb but if you don't have time to do an entire bath you just use these in the shower and the steam sort of activates them and then you get a really nice scented shower experience. I really like the peppermint one for in the morning and then the lavender one for in the evening. And then up here we have some beard products, so some beard soap and beard oil and all this stuff for beards and then up here we have these are the body bliss oils and they're sort of like an essential oil but they're not quite as intense and so you sort of rub them on your body uh, you can rub them sort of on larger areas than you would an essential oil and I have one of the gardenia ones right now and it smells amazing and then down here we have some of these stick products and all anything that's in the stick form here will have beeswax in it so those aren't vegan but down here we have some essential oil roll-ons and those are literally just the essential oils so those are vegan and they have some really nice blends of different essential oils and then over here we have the soaps so all the soaps will say whether they're vegan or not um, it just says vegan friendly but you have like this oats and honey one and then there's one more that says honey on it so those ones are not vegan but all of the other soaps are vegan so the almond and honey and the oats and honey are the ones to watch out for otherwise they are all vegan and some of them have really cool loofahs inside so the bamboo loofah and the tea tree loofah and eucalyptus loofah and so you sort of use it and then the natural loofah comes out and you can scrub with it pretty great idea and then over here is um, some chapsticks, so just watch out for those because they all have beeswax. So now let's come over here, and some of these facial masks have dairy in them, like yogurt, so watch out for those. 
We've got the canine collection, and those are to wash your dog and make your dog smell good, and those are vegan. And then over here we have the Dead Sea Mud mask, and that one is literally just the Dead Sea Mud, so that one is vegan. And then up here we've got some refreshing sprays, which are just with the essential oils, so those are vegan as well. And then squalene oil, which is vegan, and argan oil. I'm not very hip to the lingo nowadays, but I guess this is a thing people like for skincare. And then as we come down here, we'll see the tub truffles, and these are cocoa butter based, and they have different scents in them, and then what happens is they sort of melt in the tub, so a bath bomb would sort of explode and go all crazy, but these um, melt slowly, and they have more of a moisturizing effect. So there's a bunch of different um, scents of those, and then below those are the bath bombs, and the one on the left, the almond and honey, does have honey in it, so that one's not vegan, but all the rest of the scents of these bath bombs are vegan. And then we'll come over here, and there are some essential oil diffusers. And then on the front side of this little cart is the sunscreen, and I looked on the back of that, and it does have beeswax in the ingredients list. So watch out for that. And then the same deal with the sunscreen stick, also has beeswax. And then we've got some hand sanitizer with essential oil in it, and those are vegan, I would assume. And then over here we just have a few more soaps. So I'm super happy that Rinse has a permanent location in downtown Disney now because they have so many vegan products and they all smell amazing. Now let's head over to Curl Surf, which is actually more of a clothing store, but they have some sunscreens, including some vegan and cruelty-free sunscreens by Sunbum. So I'll read to you from the FAQ on their website about what products are vegan. They say, most of our products are vegan, including our original sunscreen lotions, SPF 15 to 50, original sunscreen sprays, mineral sunscreen collection, SPF lip balms, cool down lotions and sprays, along with our extensive line of baby bum and hair care products. But what is not vegan is cocoa balms, tinted lip balms, signature lip balm, mineral lip balm, and baby bum diaper rash cream. They all contain beeswax, and they say we are currently working on a solution uh, using synthetic beeswax, and then they have some hair products with honey. So you can get some vegan and cruelty-free sunscreen here, which is especially useful if you find yourself you have arrived at the park without having brought any sunscreen. Now we'll just check out some of the food trucks that show up in the afternoons, so the late afternoons in downtown Disney. They have this mad dumpling truck and it is not very vegan friendly at all. They just have what they call veggie flavored steamed rice and it's literally just rice that is cooked in veggie broth. So it's only like $3, so it's not like it's super expensive or anything, but it's just rice. There used to be a food truck of crepes Bonaparte and that was really cool because they actually had a vegan crepe batter and they could make you vegan crepes, but they seem to have ended their time in downtown Disney. They also used to be The Habit and The Habit has a vegan burger, but that appears to be gone for the moment. And what has appeared recently is this empanada truck, but I went up to the truck and I said, what do you have for vegans? Do you have anything um, that can be modified? And they were like, maybe, I don't know, salad? Do you eat salad? <laughs> but they said that the dough on the empanadas actually has um, milk in it, so you can't really modify any of the empanadas to be vegan. Alright, so that's going to do it for all the vegan options at Downtown Disney as of June 2019. Please comment below and let me know what your favorite option is, and please let me know if I missed anything. And please give the video a thumbs up if you found it helpful. Please check my blog and my Instagram at Happiest Vegan on Earth for all the most up-to-date information. That's where I update every single day on the Instagram. And of course, check out my other videos where I have the comprehensive guides to all the vegan options at Disneyland and California Adventure and the Disneyland Hotels. Until next time, see you real soon!